Michael Corlum here with an analysis of 1985 Super Mario Bros. for the Nintendo Entertainment System. Most of what I cover on this channel are role-playing games and adventure titles, but action games and platformers have story too. They just aren't always told through in-game text or cutscenes, especially with earlier games. A lot has been written on the topic of the game's origin, so I'll be brief here. Shigeru Miyamoto's development goal was to create the ultimate ROM cartridge title before the release of the Famicom Disk System, a peripheral that he was certain would spell the end of console games on cartridge in favor of floppy disk games. Clearly, this didn't happen. Toward this end, though, he used everything he learned from working in games, including the large colorful sprites introduced in Devil World and the smooth scrolling implemented in Excitebike and his Nintendo port of Kung Fu. As with many action games, gameplay came first, guided by the capabilities and limitations of the Famicom hardware. After deciding to increase the size of Mario Sprite mid-production, the team decided it would be fun to incorporate this into the game via a power-up, rather than just having a large Mario the entire time. This size-changing led to setting development. Japanese folklore includes a trope of protagonists wandering into forests and changing size by the way of magical mushrooms, hence the introduction of the Mushroom Kingdom. Okay, let's take a look at the manual. It's fairly sparse with your typical how-to-play and pictures of the power-up and enemies, but it does have the bulk of what we're given as backstory. One day, the kingdom of the peaceful mushroom people was invaded by the Koopa, a tribe of turtles famous for their black magic. The quiet, peace-loving mushroom people were turned into mere stones, bricks, and even field horsehair plants, and the mushroom kingdom fell into ruin. The only one who can undo the magic spell on the Mushroom People and return them to their normal selves is the Princess Toadstool, the daughter of the Mushroom King. Unfortunately, she is presently in the hands of the Great Koopa Turtle King. Mario, the hero of the story, maybe, hears about the Mushroom People's plight and sets out on a quest to free the Mushroom Princess from the evil Koopa and restore the fallen kingdom of the Mushroom People. You are Mario! It is up to you to save the Mushroom People from the black magic of the Koopa. This is the English localization. Princess Peach has always been Princess Peach in Japanese. But what's important to note here are that the Koopa, a tribe of turtles famous for their black magic, Bowser 2 is explicitly a turtle. Though again, this is the English localization. In the Japanese, Koopa is the name of both the tribe and their leader up until the Super Mario World's release for the Super Nintendo. The Mushroom King, as a character, is referenced but never shown, and this also tells us that the Mushroom people were turned into stones, bricks, and field horsehair plants. The implication being that every time you smash a brick block, you're killing a mushroom person. Near the end, we're told that Mario is the hero of the story, maybe, who heard about what's happened and set out to save the princess, who can undo the spell and return her kingdom to normal. Miyamoto has said as recently as 2023 that they see the connection to Mario Bros, a game in which Mario and Luigi collect coins and fight vermin in the New York sewer, being that the brothers arrived in the Mushroom Kingdoms by following a pipe. There is a large wealth of supplementary material. Comics, cartoons, movies, but we're here to consider the game only in the context in which it was released. Our player character is Mario, previously seen in Donkey Kong, Donkey Kong Jr., Mario Bros., Pinball, Golf, and Wrecking Crew, along with any number of Game & Watch games. He's wearing his trademark blue overalls over a red shirt and everything except Golf, where he's dressed for golf, and Wrecking Crew, where he's wearing red and brown. Those are the colors we see him in here, red overalls over a brown shirt, white owl overalls with a red shirt when you have the fire flower. His prior appearances are all we have to judge him by here, as there's no real personality at play. He's been a plumber, a construction worker, part of a pinball machine, a poacher of exotic animals, and a golfer. Clearly our Mario is a job hopper, and in this game he's a questing hero. Between Mario Bros and Super, he's gained the ability to defeat many enemies by jumping on them, and he can generally run faster and jump higher than his previous appearances. Give him that mushroom and he'll double in size and grows in strength sufficient enough to smash bricks with a raised fist. If he finds a fire flower, he can throw bouncing fireball projectiles and the Starman makes him invincible. 
These power-ups are available to Luigi as well, but not the Koopa Tribe enemies. We can conclude, perhaps, that their properties are specific to human DNA. Or maybe it's a Superman Yellow Sun situation. Whatever the properties of these artifacts are, they do nothing for those native to the Mushroom Kingdom, but empower those from Earth. Regarding the Mushroom Kingdom, we see many features here that bring it further from Earth. The floating bricks can be attributed to Koopa's black magic, but each stage is filled with unique architecture like springboards, floating platforms, giant mushrooms, and the transport pipes. The game is divided into eight four-stage worlds, bringing to mind the nine worlds of North Norse mythology. The Mushroom Kingdom can thus be thought of as multiversal, or at least a stacked related set of dimensions. Nine if you consider the inescapable hell dimension of Minus World. Despite this division, there are no strong themes to unite of a given world's substages. The first three of each is one of three archetypes. The first three of each is one of several archetypes. The standard overworld with its brick floors, blue or black sky depending on time of day, and the background vegetation. The underwater stages with its coral, fish, and no need to breathe. The underground world of muted color schemes and somber music or the athletic stages without much in the way of floor and a multitude of moving platforms. These terrain collectively make up the Mushroom Kingdoms, regardless of world. The fourth stage in each world is a castle in which a princess may or may not be kept, featuring rotating fireballs and flying balls of lava. Each fortress ends in a bridge over lava where you face a King Koopa, a false Koopa in the first seven worlds revealed when defeated with fireballs to be one of the other enemy types. Only World 8-4 contains the real king and a real princess, the priors only holding mushroom retainers who thank you for their rescue, but warn that Toadstool herself is in another castle. These seven retainers, servants of the princess, are the only mushroom people to retain their original forms. This too is a localization matter. In the Japanese manual, they're only referred to as mushrooms, and their function as retainer is purely speculative. These interactions, saving a retainer and being told the princess is in another castle, is practically the only cutscene in the game, the only additional one coming at the end when Toadstool thanks the player and presents them with a new quest. The same game, only all of the Goombas have been replaced by Buzzy Beetles, the enemies are all faster, there are more fireballs, and elevator platforms are half normal size. That, in short, is all the narrative Super Mario Bros. gives the player. Not much, perhaps, but more is implied by the setting and characters than you'd have seen in past platformers, particularly the easily missed transformation when one of the false King Koopa are beaten with fireballs instead of being avoided. It's a simple story. Working class hero avoids dangerous obstacles to rescue a princess, and then has to do it again forever. Prescient, perhaps, for a series that stays locked into that pattern for decades. Thank you for watching this shorter video. It was a bit of an experiment, so if you found value here, drop a comment and let me know, and I'll cover more story -like games in the future.